You're listening to Fit Girl, your guide to getting in shape, the podcast dedicated to helping you separate fact from fiction in fitness. For more details about this podcast and other episodes, visit fitgirlpodcast.com. This is podcast episode number 278. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to embrace imperfection and what the new Strong and Powerful logo actually means. Also, it's going to be two in nutrition and training. In nutrition, we have two easy tips that will make a big difference on your waistline. And in training, two problem areas, namely the knees and the shoulders, and easy fixes for those. First quick announcement is that at the apparel store, we actually have some new designs and some new material. The moisture wick material, the kind that kind of pulls the sweat and stuff away from you. Very lightweight, really comfortable when you're exercising, especially if it's really hot outside. And you can find those with the barbell bunny on them and also with the dumbbell kitty. And there's a couple of new uh, designs coming out with those two guys as well. So make sure you go check out that shop. And I want to thank everybody who gave me the response about helping me test the new community and new website system that I'm working on. And you'll be getting an email from me soon. And there's still a couple spots left if you wanted to tag on to that, which means you still have a chance to be one of the founding members of this new Strong and Powerful community. And if you're interested, you can email me, Kira at fitgirlpodcast.com or Kira at fitnessmakeover.com or any other address you can find for me or any email that I've sent to you, you can just hit reply. And in case you're wondering what that is all about, it's actually a place where I've finally been able to consolidate all of my sites. So I'll be able to put up everything there that I have. And in the membership part, I'm going to include pretty much everything I've ever made, which is all of the audio workouts that take you basically like me standing right next to you through your workout, all of the different workout programs that have gone through the eight-week makeover, the six-week makeover, the 12-week sculpt and burn, and all of these different things that um, I've created and I want to make accessible to everyone to not only use, but also this has a, I hate to say forum type setting because it's more like a Facebook thing where you can um, put something up there and then people can comment and talk and you have a whole conversation around one specific topic. And this way, Not only can I get faster feedback from everybody, but everybody else can kind of help each other. And that's kind of my goal is to have a sort of fitness community where everyone helps each other, supports each other. There's inevitably different situations that we'll be in where we can't figure something out, whether it's, you know, what do I eat on this occasion? Or, you know, I can't do this for my workout. What's a substitute? Things like that that other people have been through. And I think there's nothing greater than using your experiences to help somebody else. And that's pretty much what the whole Strong and Powerful community is going to be about. And that's not only helping us to grow, but helping others grow while we grow, if that makes sense. And as we start testing more of it, then you'll be getting more information about that from me. So make sure you're signed up for the email list. So this time around, we're going to start out with nutrition and just hit it off the top here. Two easy tips that's going to make a big difference on your waistline. And the first one is to eat slowly. And I know that might sound pretty simplistic, but when you think about it, some people will eat so fast that you don't even know if they realize they've eaten anything, let alone chewed it. So when you stop and take a second to eat slowly, not only are you going to be able to actually taste the food, but the activity of your mouth and your teeth breaking down that food is going to make it better for your body to digest it. And of course, that's going to be better in the long run for many different reasons. But the most important thing is that besides getting more flavor out of it, you're going to take longer to eat it. And when you take a little bit longer, you actually give your body a chance to kind of catch up and get satisfied. And that's why a lot of times when people eat really fast, they can eat a lot and too much. So if you slow it down and be very thoughtful about what you're chewing and how you're chewing, and maybe just waiting a couple seconds before putting anything else on your fork, then you're going to slow down and you're probably going to feel full faster. And of course, that's going to help prevent you from eating too much. So give it a chance next time you eat something. Not only slow down, try to think of the different tastes and textures that you're experiencing and get to know if a food really has a distinct flavor or maybe it doesn't. And sometimes you'll recognize when maybe something's more in season, like a fruit or a vegetable, because you'll be able to taste it differently. But you'll only know that if you slow down your chewing. 
Now the next easy tip is one that I'm constantly telling my clients, don't skip meals, eat on a schedule. So whichever way you want to think about it, you've got to make sure your body has food at regular intervals. Because the first thing I hear when somebody says, oh, I gained weight, I have to drop some weight, I'll just skip meals, or I'll skip breakfast, or I don't eat breakfast, gosh, you know, that's even worse. Don't skip meals. Your body needs to stay alive, and it's going to use whatever it can to do that. So we want it to use the fuel, which is the food that we give it. We don't want it to use our own muscle. Now, of course, you're saying, well, I want it to use my body fat. Well, sure you do, but you know what? It wants to keep that for long-term health and storage. So that's why we have to trick it into letting go of the fat by letting it think that it's going to be getting food at regular intervals. So when you keep giving your body food at regular intervals, like your breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, then it realizes it's okay. It's got this constant flux of food. It can let go of the fat. It's not as essential anymore. But the minute you skip a meal, your body kind of freezes up and says, nope, keeping this fat, not going to let go of it. And it's going to take quite a bit of time for it to get back to the point where it trusts you again, that you're going to feed it regularly. Now, it doesn't mean have a big seven course meal every couple hours, but it does mean putting something in your body that is useful for it, meaning healthy, and doing that maybe every three, four, five hours at the most, but definitely not more than six or eight hours without food. And of course, the only time that you really should be doing that is when you're asleep. And when you're asleep, your body is not requiring as much energy. So its requirements are quite a bit different. Now, there's a couple of things that go with this. If you are eating on a schedule, you're less likely to have cravings because if you are giving your body balanced meals or balanced feedings, which means you have some protein, some carbs, some fiber in that, then it's not going to be craving things. A lot of times when your body craves something, usually it's a sugar or a carbohydrate, and that's because it's trying to tell you, I need food, I need fuel, give me something. And that's the thing that is going to get your blood sugar up fastest, and that's why your body pushes you towards that particular type of food. But in the same respect, some people say, hey, you know, I'm just not hungry. Well, that's nice, but you still want to eat on that schedule. Because when you are actually hunger with those really bad hunger pangs, that's when you're already in that mode where your body is totally storing fat. So you don't want to get to that point. You really want to get to the point where just before you start to get hungry, that you're eating something. And you only know that by scheduling your meal plans. And what you'll find is as your metabolism starts to speed up, you'll get hungry more often in between those meal spans and you'll have to shorten them. And that's good because your metabolism is increasing. And it might also mean you need to add a little more food or you might need to change some of the dynamics of the components. And that's a whole other topic we'll have to hit later on. Although meal components and you know basically how to make a balanced meal is a whole other subject. We do teach that in the fitness makeover program because it is so key to boosting your metabolism and having your body work at its optimal function. So the one thing I do want to clarify is that the meal components make a difference, not so much what time you're eating this. And I know there's a lot of times people say the same thing. Oh, I got to lose weight. I know I have to stop eating after six o'clock. It's like, no, you don't. You have to stop eating bad things after six o'clock, but that doesn't mean you have to stop eating. So it goes back to what you're eating, not necessarily what time of day that you're eating it. So if you eat something before bed, depending on what it is, it might actually benefit you. Um, of course, if it's something that you know you shouldn't be eating, then it's not. But that's what it boils down to, making the right decisions and making informed decisions so that you can do things that will actually help your body. Okay, so from now on, you're going to eat slowly and chew your food very, very well and take your time eating. And you're also not going to skip meals. Or let's put it in that positive, productive statement of you eat on a schedule. So make that your next short-term goal to eat on a schedule. Whether you pick three hours, four hours, five hours, or you devise it however differently, just pick something and do it. And whether you set an alarm on your phone or whether you set an alarm with the email or however you have to notify yourself, then do it. A lot of times just remembering, hey, okay, 12 o'clock is the next time I need to eat. And then you eat and then just remind yourself, okay, 4 o'clock is the next time I need to eat. And see how it goes. And I'm sure you're going to feel great and your body's going to really appreciate it. And things are going to start changing for you if you keep that up. 
So I'm trying to merge everything into my strong and powerful.com. And that's because we use it so much in training and especially with kids and teenagers. And it really has a great impact on the way your mindset is. So being the anal person I am, it has taken me actually years to figure out a logo for it because I really couldn't decide on anything I liked. I knew there was always one thing that I liked, and that's actually a character, a Japanese character that stands for strength. Um, a long time ago, I had gotten a bracelet with it on it, and I thought it was really cool. So I was trying to figure out how to incorporate that into a logo. And then I started doing my research, because you know I do that. So of course that took a long time too, because I like to be real particular and make sure that I'm not just grabbing the first thing that comes up as far as information goes. I really like to dive deep and really make sure that I understand the, the background of a word or a symbol or whatever. So I ended up finding um, another Japanese symbol called the Enzo Circle. And if you're not familiar with it, what it is is basically they make a circle in one fell swoop. And it's supposed to look a certain way, but what it's also saying is that it's perfect, but it's not perfect because each one's going to be a little bit different because it's just one big freehand stroke. Of course, I found lots of different definitions for it and a lot of different interpretations, but I ended up finding one that I thought really was perfect. And that's kind of hard for me to do because I'm always looking for the perfect thing and there never really is one as we know. So what I found was that this was considered a symbol of elegance and it symbolized the beauty of imperfection. And I thought, well, that's just perfect because everyone is beautiful and everybody has imperfections. And unfortunately, all we ever do is stare at those imperfections instead of recognizing the fact that like we are an amazing being. I mean, when you think about the human body and all the way we look differently and our eyes are different, our hair is different, everything is different. And yet you know, we're all beautiful, whether it's on you know the direct outside or the inside that it makes the outside pretty. I mean, just there's so many different ways that a person can be beautiful. I mean, you've seen people where you're like, you know, they're not traditionally beautiful, like what other people might think, but they're striking, they're stunning, and that's beautiful. So recognizing these imperfections and part of what the strong and powerful concept is to increase self-confidence and self-esteem. And within that, learning to embrace your imperfections. Now, no matter what we do, there's always going to be something about us that we want to change. And too often, that's because we're comparing it to somebody else that we hold the standard to. And that doesn't mean that they're better than us or look better. We've given maybe them that power. But in essence, if we look at ourselves and realize, hey, this is as good as I'm going to be, you know, whether it's being lean or whether it's increasing your posture, making it, making yourself stand taller, whether it's getting a little bit leaner, whatever the case may be, you can only improve on yourself. So the concept is not to compare yourself to other people, but compare yourself to you. And are you progressing? Not are you perfect? Are you growing as a person? Are you getting stronger physically and emotionally? And how you keep that up, how you maintain that, and how you continue to move forward looking for new growth in the sense of either changing something on your body or just learning a new skill or just learning more about yourself. So the logo I created, even though it's very basic, is that Enzo circle with that kanji symbol for strength inside of it. And to me, that definitely is everything I want Strong and Powerful to stand for strength, beauty, but understanding the beauty and imperfection, embracing the beauty of imperfection, realizing that, you know, you are the perfect you. You don't think it, but you should think it because you're the only you and you're unique. And that's a really special thing. So when I came down to having to write what it meant, like a definition or a concept, I came up with this. Strong and powerful embraces the concept that we have infinite possibilities mentally and physically to grow, to learn, to heal, and to help others. And this kind of coincides with all the things we were talking about for mindset being so important for changing your body, for looking at things in a different perception or perceiving things different ways. And I know it might sound kind of corny, but when I think of this and I think about people accepting imperfection as perfection and finding their own self-confidence and self-value, I can only hope that it would help make it a better world. You know, if everybody realized that they are valuable, no matter what somebody else says to them, so basically the abuse that you might receive from coworkers or friends or bullying, all that kind of stuff, being able to recognize that, no, I'm good. I have value. 
I'm important, I'm unique, I'm special. And if everybody did that, then we wouldn't have as many issues. And so I guess, you know, being idealistic, I'm hoping that if everybody adopts even a little bit of it, we'll all be nicer to each other and the world will be a better place. So now as I read you the mission statement or mini mission statement for Strong and Powerful, the community that we're creating, um, it's going to all make sense. So Strong and Powerful, our mission is to create a strong and powerful community that brings awareness to the value and difference each person makes in this world. One that strengthens the mind as well as the body. Because let's face it, your body can look great, but if your mind's all messed up, you're going to be miserable, and that's not a happy place no matter what you look like. But in the same respect, if your mind is in the right place and your body's not quite where you want it to be, you're still going to feel good and be happy. So we got to use one to get to the other, and that means we have to use your mind to get your body better. So next time something's happening that you're not really thrilled with, maybe just say to yourself, I am strong and powerful. And it might seem weird at first, but after a while you understand it deeper and you realize, yeah, you know what? I am strong and powerful. I can handle this. I got this. And make sure you share the concept with other people because there's strength in numbers. And that's also one of the reasons for the community is to have like-minded people getting together to talk about different things. Now on to training. Uh, the two things I hear most from people is that they have problems with their knees and their shoulders. And pretty much nine times out of 10, it's because they're not stretching them properly or frequently enough. And they're not doing the right exercises to support the function of those two body parts. So I'm going to give you two easy ways to fix this. So with the knees, a lot of times people will feel discomfort in the knee when they begin to bike or they begin to walk or maybe they get up from a chair. And usually that's an indication that the quadricep muscles are tight. Now that's the stretch where you stand on one leg and you pull the heel to the butt of the same leg. Now for some people it's not too easy to stand on one leg. I always suggest holding on to something because I want people to focus on the stretch, not trying to stand on one foot. But if that's also an issue, you can do it laying down in bed and just lay on your side and bring your foot up to your heel. Now eventually you'll be able to get it all the way up there. Um, and you, then you'll be able to move your thigh slightly back. The main thing is that when you're doing it, try to keep your body upright because all of these muscles are connected. So just because you're stretching the quad, you also want to stretch that hip flexor and everything that connects all the way up to your shoulders because believe it or not, you can have tight quads, tight hips, and that be giving you problems and issues with your shoulders. Likewise, your neck and shoulders can follow all the way down and mess up your lower body too. So the main thing is to do that the minute you start feeling that discomfort. Stop, hold the stretch for about 10 seconds, and then continue on, see how it feels. That way at least you've got some blood flowing into the muscle before you stretched it, and then hopefully you can stretch it a little bit longer or as you go through that particular session and then do more at the end. But the main thing is just do it. Now the other thing I notice when it comes to knees is that people don't do things correctly no matter how much we try to instruct. When you're doing anything like leg press or lunges or squats, you must keep your heels down. You wanna push your body weight through your heels because that's gonna connect with your glutes. Now, not only is that gonna make your glutes better and rounder as we know from last episode because we know that squats are better for building the booty than hip thrusts, but when it comes to your knees, your butt and the back of your leg is going to help strengthen the muscles that support that knee. So basically by doing squats, keeping your heels down, pushing through the heels, using your butt to lift your body and your hamstrings, you're actually going to be strengthening the knees because in essence, you're stretching the quadriceps as you're working the back of the leg. So that also holds true for doing the leg curl. And I usually prefer to have my clients do the line leg curl than the seated one because it tends to be on the seated, they don't get it all the way down or all the way up, whichever way you want to look at it. But on the line curl, there really is no other option. You've got to get it all the way up to your butt or you don't. So it's not so easy to cheat. But again, it depends on which one's most comfortable for the person. Now, of course, there's different ways to do them with dumbbells and things like that, but we're talking about some of the movements where you're looking at the bend in that knee joint to help with the quadriceps. So you really don't need to do too much direct work on that quadricep, and I, I really don't use leg extension uh, for most people. Again, it just always depends on the situation, but that's not necessarily going to be 
a go-to exercise for most of my clients. Squats, yes, absolutely. Leg curl, yes, absolutely. So those two things alone are going to help the knees. So we'll always think about that. If you start to feel discomfort in the knees, stop and stretch the front of that leg. And you're probably going to really feel a lot better. And eventually it's going to get looser and everything is going to work better. You're going to stand taller. Your posture is going to be better. Lower back's going to ache less. And we can go on with all the benefits. Now, the second body part that tends to have a lot of issues is the shoulder. And I see this all the time. People will say, oh, I have bad shoulders, my shoulders hurt. And it's like, yeah, well, why are you doing what you're doing? Because a lot of times they're not doing the right exercises, they're doing them incorrectly, they're doing them too heavy. Um, I think the problem is that the best exercises for the shoulders, which are the rotator cuff exercises, are not very exciting, they're not very fun, and they certainly don't look cool at all. As a matter of fact, you can hardly use any weight with it. Maybe three pounds would be a maximum. So yeah, they're not very glamorous, but we need to do them to really keep the shoulder healthy. And I see a lot of times people doing it in the gym standing up, not quite the right position for, for gravity. I mean, it's certainly better than nothing, but the ideal is laying on your side and doing it one arm at a time, which of course takes a little extra time because you're doing one at a time. But again, it's better than messing up your shoulders. So these little muscles are so import important and yeah, we've got to address them, whether it's glamorous or not. I do have on the Get Fit TV, or you could go to Fitness Makeover, um, the video on the shoulder saver. And that is the rotator cuff exercises and the rear deltoid exercises that are crucial for keeping your shoulder healthy. And especially if you're involved in any type of sports, such as volleyball or basketball or baseball, or if your kids are involved in those sports, anything that really requires your shoulder to move and that's pretty much everything. So athletes without a doubt should be doing these exercises really every day. Now you may have heard them as being called the lying L um, or the straight arm crossbody. The, the names don't really make sense. You kind of have to see them and then you'll be like, oh yeah, but make sure you start with very, very lightweight. And I really mean like one or two pounds at the most and go for 10 to 15 repetitions. You definitely should feel that burn deep inside the shoulder. Then you know it's working well. And again, depending on the situation, I'll have a lot of people use them as a warm up because it kind of gets the shoulders activated and the muscles that are there to support it. And it really prepares the shoulder for some work without overexposing it to the possibility of injury, which obviously could happen at any time. But whatever we can do to minimize it is definitely something we want to take advantage of. Relatively speaking, this was a short but sweet uh, podcast. And you may think that I forgot about putting up on the YouTube channel the different power exercises I had mentioned. Well, I didn't forget. I just didn't actually put them together with a little bit of instruction on the side there. So I have that coming up. And well, if you're on the subscribe list, you'll get notification when that comes up. But then at least you can see some of the different power exercises I was referring to. So again, just make sure you're on one of my lists so that you can get notification of when the Strong and Powerful community and all the things that are going to go with it is available. And of course, all the other cool stuff that's going to go along with that. As always, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I look forward to giving you all the insights to help you reach all of your goals and to help you get your best body ever. If you'd like additional information on these topics and more articles on health, nutrition, and motivation, visit fitnessmakeover.com, allinoneworkout.com, or coachkira.com.